mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا My dear beloved brothers and sisters welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Huda and our phone numbers as a reminder in the beginning of this episode is a code 002-023-855-131 the email address is ask at huda.tv and the Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah official. I um, had a pending question from the previous episode. I totally forgot about it, even though I was very curious to uh, uh, get the question and deliver its answer during the last episode. It was from our brother Abdul Hakim from Ethiopia who introduced himself as a dentist. And وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانِ Nothing made me forget its answer, but Satan, subhanAllah. Uh, he had a couple questions. The first one was about uh, wearing artificial teeth and uh, performing wudu. Would uh, wearing artificial teeth uh, contradict the concept of al madmada or rings in the mouth during wudu? Do I have to remove them? No, you don't have to remove them. Circulating the water inside the mouth through the process of al madmada or rings in the mouth with water. Uh, for wudu is sufficient and you don't have to remove it. His second question was about his name, Abdul Hakim. And this is also a, a beautiful name because it is a name uh, after uh, being a servant of one of uh, Allah's names, which is Al Hakim. So it is permissible uh, to say Abdul Hakim, Abdul Khabir, or Abd to any of Allah's names. But his question is, uh, some people call me Hakim sometimes. Is it forbidden? No, it is not forbidden. Because once al tarif is removed, then it is a, a trait that could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, given to any person. Any person who maintains this trait as an entitled for it can be named such name or such title. Yani Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, يُؤْتِي الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا He grants wisdom to whomever he wills. Allah grants al-hikmah to whomever he wills. And whoever is been granted al-hikmah, wisdom has indeed been given a great deal of blessing. So a person who's been granted wisdom, what is his uh, title or you know description? Hakim. Okay. So the word Hakim is perfectly okay but when you say al-hakim the all wise that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay um, <clears throat> the following question is uh, from brother abdul rahim he says if a sister gets remarried and she has kids and her new husband has kids does her new father in law become mahram to her daughter and why do, okay, the first question I wrote, uh, you know, al-mahramiyya, uh, which is the relationship which makes a person forbidden for another to marry eternally. In Surah An-Nisa, uh, number 23, Allah the Almighty listed those who are forbidden for a person to marry forever. In the same ayah, Allah the Almighty listed a very interesting category. He said, وَرَبَائِبُكُمُ اللَّاتِي فِي حُجُورِكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمُ اللَّاتِي دَخَلْتُمْ بِهِنْ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُونُوا دَخَلْتُمْ بِهِنَّ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ Okay. وَرَبَائِبُكُمْ اللَّاتِي فِي حُجُورِكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمُ اللَّاتِي دَخَلْتُمْ بِهِنْ الرَّبَائِبْ دُورَ الْأُفْرَبِيبَ the uh, stepdaughter okay so if somebody married a woman who already have kids she's got some girls these daughters they become rabaib to 
the uh, stepfather provided that the husband and wife the mother of the of these girls or this girl have already consummated the marriage with this man yani the condition which Allah the Almighty stipulated in this ayah is a duhul a woman who have kids got married to somebody but they only did the marriage contract and they got separated he divorced her before touching her now in the future somehow he met one of her daughters and he is interested in marrying her and she is interested in marrying him is it permissible it is permissible but if they after processing the marriage contract they consummated the marriage then all her daughters become like his daughters exactly muharramat for good forbidden for him to marry forever so uh, uh, mere marriage contract with the mother does not make the daughter the stepdaughter forbidden but the opposite is true if somebody married a girl they did process a marriage contract and they did not proceed towards the consummation of the marriage and they undid the marriage contract he divorced her he is not allowed to marry he, her mother under any circumstances because her mother to have become forbidden eternally for him this restriction is only for the immediate stepfather but his father whom now the sister is asking that he is my new father-in-law and uh, is he a mahram not necessarily she's asking because that her father-in-law is interested in marrying her daughter this is not necessarily the case even though it's permissible but she's asking about the mahramiya can my daughter sit without the hijab before my father-in-law who is considered to be her grand step grandfather yes it is permissible for her to marry her which means that they are not mahram to each other so she must wear hijab before him because they are not mahram to each other this mahramiya relationship is only for the father not for his father who is now your father-in-law I perfectly understand that the person who presented the question got the answer very clear and those who are not in in a similar situation may be a little bit confused but go back to the ayah of Surat An-Nisa where you would understand that the stepdaughter becomes forbidden forever to marry if you consummated the marriage with her mother but if the marriage was not consummated and divorce happened even after the marriage contract and before consummating the marriage, then it is permissible for this person to marry this girl who was about to be his stepdaughter. She is not yet. Okay? But if they consummated the marriage, she becomes eternally forbidden for him because now she has become officially his stepdaughter. But she is not forbidden for his father. Yani, she has to wear hijab before the person who have become a grandfather uh, to her due to the fact this person married to his mother um, the following question is from uh, Nadra Abdul Najid Nadra says is it permissible to wear niqab while praying some says yes some say no I'm just curious about it whenever you are in the prayer and whenever you are in ihram, you must uncover your face. You must uncover your face. So uh, uh, wearing niqab while praying is not permissible. Now there are some uh, uh, cases where if the person, if the woman have no room to pray in in private, but she has to pray in public, and she is already wearing a face veil. We're not discussing the verdict of wearing a face veil for women but we're talking about a woman who decided to wear a face veil now can or does she have to take it off because she's praying in front of uh, men no she can pray while she keeps it on i'd like to notify you brothers and sisters unfortunately we're having uh, a problem with the phone lines the landlines and uh, instead we would like to provide you the alternative number right now the number should appear on the screen area code zero zero two then zero 
1005469323. The number once again is area code 002, then 0, uh, 0100546923. Brother Muhsin from Bahrain, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to Ask Wada. Go ahead, Brother Muhsin. Uh, I guess my question is that. Sorry? Go ahead, please. Uh, is it a stupid Zakaba? We see a lot of people kissing and bowing their head on the Kaaba. And we know that the direction where you make sujood and not the cover that we worship, but we worship Allah. So, is it permissible to take the cover and make dua bar on the cover? Well, I didn't get that part. You said that we worship Allah that is true, we face the Kaaba in our direction of the prayer, but is it permissible to do what? Is it permissible to bow down and you know, kiss the Kaaba? You know that we can kiss Hajj as well. Oh, uh, okay. But okay. is it allowed to uh, kiss uh, the. I, I got your question, Mars. Okay. Um, let's not confuse the issues. We all know that the Kaaba is bricks and stones that have been remodeled and some new bricks have been used and so on. So nothing of the Kaaba that uh, we worship and we do not worship anything other than Allah the Almighty. All Muslims and non-Muslims should know about Islam and Muslims this fact. We do not worship but Allah the Almighty. So what is this uh, thing that we do uh, do uh, tawaf around the Kaaba and kiss the Kaaba. We do not kiss the Kaaba. We only kiss a stone which is known as the black stone. For a reason, because the Prophet وسلم, kissed it uh, while he was performing tawaf, and he have informed us that this stone is a stone that was sent down uh, from heaven along with Adam alayhi salam. He was whiter than the milk and it turned dark due to our sins and so on. And Umar ibn Khattab made it very clear to us that when he came to kiss the black stone, he uttered the following statement. He said, by Allah, I know that you're just a stone. You do not benefit, nor do you harm, or protect against any harm. Have I not seen the Prophet ﷺ kissing you? I wouldn't have done so. So there is no um, you know, devotion or worship to any stone whatsoever. This is you know, shirk. But kissing the black stone is a sunnah because the Prophet ﷺ did so for the previous season I mentioned. It is not permissible nor recommended to kiss any other part of the Kaaba though. Uh, let, let's take this call. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Al Amin from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, brother, I have three questions. Yeah. Is it possible to pray behind an Imam who can recite the Quran well? Okay, how bad is he? What kind of mistake does he do? Like he, he, he should get on a sort of path here. Sometimes he recites like a uh, ghair. Instead of ghair, he uses like a khair. Khair al maghdoub. Instead of oh. ghair al maghdoub. Mm -hmm. And we have no. Okay, I got your first question. Amin, and try again, please. Okay. So this is what we have to uh, personally believe in, then try to pass on this knowledge to others, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. Al-Kaaba is just a symbol. We do not worship the Kaaba. We do not bow down to the Kaaba. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you face, you're facing Allah the Almighty. But it is Allah who ordered us to face this direction. And before we used to face Jerusalem, so complying with the command of Allah is what matters, and it is the determining factor, not the item itself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sister Khadija from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Salah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, Sister Khadija. How are you doing? Point. Doing just fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Pray please follow me and follow for, for my family. May Allah bless you and your family, Sister Khadija. Amen. Um, Dr. Salah, I want to ask you regarding, um, what is his name, insurance, life insurance, takaful. Here in UAE, there is an Islamic bank, they have uh, takaful insurance. Like, uh, we have to uh, pay for seven years, 1,000 dirham each month, and then only seven years. 
And mm. after seven years, no need to pay anything. And when, if I will die or something happen, accident, that they will pay to my family 350,000 dirham. Mm. Or they said, uh, if you can't pay 1,200, then we will give half million to your family after my death. Mm. So I want to ask it is, uh, what is the kaful? Okay. And it is uh, halal or not? And then I asked the bank where you will keep the money, which is I will give for uh, for seven years. They said we will uh, give to Salama Investment Company, mm. and they will collect from all the customers. And if there is something happen in the other family, they will collect your money and they will give to that family. And then if something with you happen, they will give the money of that people. They will give to you. So in Salama Investment Company, they will put. So what's this takaful and uh, why it's an Islamic bank okay. and they are calling me to join? Okay, okay. Got your question, Thank you Sister very Khadija. much, Sheikh. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, please try again. Uh, now the black stone in that corner is uh, like, you know, I would say uh, the height approximately one meter or so. So in order to kiss the black stone, it's like maybe one and a half. You have to lean over a little bit to kiss the black stone. Is this down, down? No, this is not down, down. And do you ever think that the Prophet ﷺ would ever bow down to a stone? If when some of the companions return from Asham and from here and there, and they have seen how the Romans and the people of the book honor their leaders by bowing down to them. So they wanted to do the same to the Messenger of Allah. He refused. He said, no one should bow down to other than Allah, the Almighty. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ahmed from Nigeria, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Naam, Ahmed, go ahead. Yes, my question is regarding the Adhan yeah. and then the Ikama. Mm. Uh, we are expected to repeat the, uh, the Adhan when it's been uh, called. So what about the Ikama? Okay. I got your question, Brother Ahmed. Thank you. Brother Al Amin from Gambia. Uh, he was supposed to present two questions, but his, his line got disconnected. So his question is about praying behind an Imam who makes grave errors in the recitation of the Quran. I was very specific and I asked him, Can you make mention of some of these errors? So he said that he mispronounces some of the letters, even in Surah Al Fatiha which leads to changing the meaning, such as غير المغضوب عليهم. He says خير المغضوب عليهم. Uh, this prayer is invalid, especially when we have a person who recites better. You have to understand that اللحن is divided into two categories. اللحن means making an error in the recitation of the Quran. There is a minor اللحن and there is a major اللحن. A minor, if somebody did not really pay attention to the length of the ghunna or the ikhfa or idgham and uh, the major, and that doesn't change the meaning, but it affects the recitation. A major lahn which changes the meaning, totally changes the meaning. And that's why these scholars ended up putting vowels and dots on top of the letters in the Quran. The Quran, once it was revealed, it had no dots nor vowels. But because of the expansion of the Muslim Ummah and spreading Islam uh, beyond the peninsula, and a lot of non Arab have entered Islam, they don't know whether this letter is ba or ta or tha, and whether this letter is jim or ha or kha, they have no dots. So they ended up putting the dots. And also, after some of them made grave mistakes. And Allah bari'un min al mushrikina and instead of saying wa rasuluh, they said wa rasuluh, which is completely the opposite. And it changes the meaning and it is equivalent to disbelief. So they started putting the vowels. What happens when you change the vowel? It changes the meaning. It's possible. It changes the meaning from the direct object to the subject and vice versa. It's a big mess. Uh, what happens when you change a letter? the pronunciation of the letter, such as the example that he gave. What is the meaning of the word غير, other than? What is the meaning of the word khair? Just simply, 
you know, al-ghayn wal-kha also amongst the halqi letters. Okay? But the meaning is completely different. Khair means better. So when you say, guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you bestowed your favor upon, Surat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim, ghayr al-mawdubi alayhim al-dhali, not the path of those whom gain your anger and went astray. Imagine when you say, khayr al-mawdubi alayhim, the best of those who gain your anger. It doesn't make any sense. So in this case, the person should step back until he perfects his recitation and somebody else should step in to lead uh, the prayer, even if he is much younger. Uh, Sister Fatima from Kenya. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Fatima. Mm, I have three questions. Yeah. Um, my first question is, uh, does Allah hear the prayers and the needs of the non-Muslim, the Christians? You know, when they ask Allah for something, does he, does he answer their prayers? I, unfortunately, um, I cannot I'm hear you, Sister, Sister Fatima. Uh, would you please raise your voice a little bit? Uh, what I'm asking. Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, I hear you now. Hey. Uh, does Allah hear the prayers and the needs of the non Muslims? The mm hmm. And the second question is, what is the secret toward learning Quran? What is the secret and of? My third, towards learning Quran. What do you mean the secret towards learning the Quran? Um, because I've been learning for five years, mm -hmm. and I still have difficulties. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, Sister Khadija from United Arab Emirates asked about a particular type of life insurance, okay? Um, I would avoid mentioning names because I don't know much about this institute or this organization, and that's why I will speak uh, generally. Life insurance or any insurance which is provided by commercial companies is forbidden. And uh, this is the opinion of the vast, vast, vast majority of the scholars. And this is the right opinion. Because it entails two major violations. The first is riba, and the second is gambling. Look what you said. Again, brothers and sisters, I am not familiar with the uh, firm or the company that you provided its name. And I don't go by names. I do not go by names. I do not go by the Islamic Bank of whatever or the Islamic Institute of whatever. I go by the contents and by the, by the actual contract. If any of these organizations would like to send their contract to us and we'll go through it and we'll vouch it and we'll say, brothers and sisters, those who live in this region, this organization is providing halal insurance, takaful insurance or cooperation insurance 100%, we will do that for, for the sake of Allah for free. In the United States, we have many banks and many organizations who started, you know, to help the poor and also make some, uh, and help those who would like to buy houses and make some margin profit, very secure. So they do buy the house and charge uh, extra price. Uh, they make certain calculations so that the person would not have to pay interest or mortgage and they too will make a profit. But they ended up no difference whatsoever between them and the mortgage companies or the banks, they are even worse. So that's why in AMJA, the Sharia Scholar Association of North America, we came up with the list of companies where we said, this is a pure riba bank. Even though they say it is the opposite, I don't care. So based on the contract between our hands, we can verify the authenticity and the genuine nature of this contract, not by names. Uh, I'll take this call, then inshallah I'll continue answering this question. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, ya Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Kuda. Assalamu alaikum, ya Shaykh. 
You may have to mute your TV, Sister Aisha. Thank you. Um, yes, I have one question, please. Mm -hmm. It's about my monthly income. What percentage of that would be dedicated for charity? Because um, I don't keep enough to take me the whole year to have a percentage taken out for the car. Mm. So on a monthly basis, what is expected of me as a Muslim to give out as charity? Okay, so basically you're not required to pay zakah based on your monthly income and your saving. This is what you're saying. You don't have to pay zakah. And your question is, well, with regards to the voluntary charity, how much you're expected to give? Am I right? Yes, Sheikh. Okay. Thank you, Sister Aisha from Nigeria. With regards to the voluntary charity, it is entirely up to you as much as you can afford. Only for the mandatory zakah, if you possess what is known as an nisab, the value of 85 gram of gold or 595 gram of silver, or the equivalent of cash or positions or trade or shares in the stock, for instance. And the second condition is you maintain this position for one complete lunar year. Then you must pay zakah. If you did not possess this amount or you did not reach the three shot, then you don't have to pay zakah. How much voluntary charity could you give? Uh, or should you be given entirely up to you? It is enough to understand that Allah the Almighty says whatever you spend of a good or of anything, Allah is fully aware of it. So you give, uh, you know, uh, $10, uh, Allah will reward you for that. 700 times more, up to unlimited number of times. You want to give 100, likewise, you want to give 1,000, it's entirely up to you. It's doing an investment. So if one wants to know how much should I spend, uh, I would say, <coughs> how much would you like to earn? How much hasanat and how much increase in your wealth would you like to get back? So this is how much you should give in a charity. Uh, this is what we have been taught uh, in the various ayat of the Quran and the sound hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is, you actually, that is actually your investment. So it's entirely up to you. The more you give, the more you get by the grace of Allah the Almighty. Uh, Sister Khadija from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Khadija. Wa alaikum salam, kula barakatuh. Go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, uh, my question is regarding Salah. Basically, I used to pray to my sunnahs every, but now I'm pregnant. I find it really hard praying, so I keep it with my father, but I have one issue when I pray. I can't, uh, I can't stop spitting, mm. and if I don't spit, I feel like a vomit. One time I had to open my salah and I was like halfway and just run to the toilet to vomit. Mm. Is it okay to spit while I'm praying? It's or? perfectly okay. Just keep holding some tissues and spit in them in your left hand. And uh, if you want to pray the sunnah, you can pray while sitting down, uh, which will not cost you anything. Okay, the, just for the rukur. Uh, bow down a little bit and in the sujood make certain it will be a little lower than your rukua position understand that you're pregnant it's hard to uh, bend over uh, but to the best of your ability um, as much as you can so this way you do not miss the reward of uh, praying sunnah as well with regards to spitting if this is something that you cannot avoid uh, and if you do then you have to vomit then you'd rather uh, keep spitting in a tissue that you hold in your hand okay Thank you, Sister Khadija. May Allah keep you safe and, uh, you know, give you a safe delivery um, and bless you with a goodly offspring. Brothers and sisters, we got to take a short break and inshallah in a couple of minutes we'll be back to answer some more of your valuable questions. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back and our new number should appear in a little bit on the bottom of the screen please pay attention to them a code 002 then 01 
Alternatively, same area code then 01060530884. Um, so um, back to Sister Khadija's question about uh, the life insurance. If it is a commercial insurance, it is 100% haram and forbidden. Uh, and I would really, really appreciate if you can email me with a copy of the contract, whereupon I will be more than happy, inshallah, to examine the contract and assist you with regards to that verdict. Uh, Brother Ahmed from Nigeria inquired about uh, are we recommended or required to repeat after the iqama same way like after the mu'azzin? Well, according to the vast majority of um, the fuqaha, that whatever is recommended with regards to the adhan is recommended with regards to the iqama likewise of repeating after the mu'adhan whenever he calls the adhan and whenever he calls the iqama so that whenever he says qad iqamat as-salat wa qad iqamat as-salat you come to say aqamaha Allah wa adamaha may Allah establish it and maintain it and then whatever is recommended of supplication after the adhan is also recommended to be recited after the iqama so you say allahumma rabb hadhihi ad-da'wati at-tamma wa salat al-qa'ima ati muhammadan al-wasila wa al-fadila wa ba'athu maqaman mahmudan alladhi wa'adta an also send the peace the peace and the blessings upon prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the iqama takes the same rules of the adhan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah sister asia from the ksa assalamu alaykum sister asia wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu uh, Sheikh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, we, in India, we have many, uh, we are surrounded by Hindus because it is a majority Hindu country. Yeah. And they have their uh, lots of festivals. And uh, they, they feel very bad if we don't uh, uh, wish them or we don't participate in them. And so uh, looking to that, many people have joined them. Uh, they wish uh, uh, the occasion now now recently the occasion of uh, festival of Diwali is going on so they wish the Diwali festival happy Diwali and then they they take the, they exchange the gifts and all uh, they take the gifts also so oh, I, I mean if it is uh, I, 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 as far as I have learned from you that this is not permissible if it is not permissible Sheikh I mean oh please share some wisdom that how to avoid such thing and what and how to give uh, I mean what is the reason we should give to those people because otherwise those people they are leaving contact with us and they are saying that you are fundamentalist Muslim and extremist Muslim and all mm. Alhamdulillah I don't have such issues here in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. but back in India we face uh, such problems uh, please guide. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Sister Asia from the KSA. I'll come to your question, inshallah, in a little bit. Now I just have the Sister Fatima uh, from Kenya. She had two questions. The first is about uh, Does Allah accept the dua of non Muslims? And the second was regarding having difficulty in learning the Quran. Um, may uh, clarify your first question about accepting the dua of non-Muslims because there is a difference between accepting the dua and responding to the dua. A dua literally means a prayer. So when you make dua, you're actually offering an act of worship. When you say, oh Allah, give me whatever. Oh Allah, protect me against whatever. Oh Allah, make it easy for me to marry this girl. Uh, make it easy for me and my wife to have a child this is ibadah this is the greatest form of worship ad dua huwa al ibadah so whenever a believer invokes allah supplicates to allah and asks from allah his dua is accepted because he's a believer and asking from allah the almighty is an indication that you believe in him you believe that he's the only one who can accept and answer your dua now we come to the second meaning which is Al-istijaba, bimana answering your dua, asking for anything, then Allah the Almighty will deliver. Yes, Allah the Almighty answers the dua of all His creatures, uh, human beings, jinn, uh, believers and non-believers, but with limits. Yani, in the case of the believer, Allah the Almighty answers the dua of a person who is pious, 
the person who eats from halal and in the hadith the Prophet وسلم, made mention of a person who eats from haram that his dua would not be answered uh, the very famous hadith in this regard. Uh, okay, let me take a few calls because we have many, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdul Qadir from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum, ya Asya. Alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abdul Qadir, welcome to the program. Yes, thank you, Shia. I have a question waiting on um, to Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yes, I'm listening. Yes, um, if we are praying, um, after you, then you take a you take a um, sitting posture. You recite um. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Abdul Qadir, I can't understand your question. You're breaking off. Yeah, my question was, if you are praying, if we're we praying, yeah, after to you. Go ahead, Abdul Qadir. I'm listening, please. Hello. Yes, after to you. If we take a sitting posture, do you recite uh, something there, or is it just um, a resting place for the um, body and brain? Are you asking about what do you recite between the two prostrations? Is this your question? Okay, please try again, Abdul Qadir. Brother Amin from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Amin. Assalamu alaikum, Doctor. Thank you so much for uh, for your service, the humanity. Zakallahu khairan, akhi ameen, barakallahu feek. Thank you so much. Uh, my question is that um, today I was doing a star uh, for uh, Masa. Mm -hmm. After Salat al Maghrib, so someone uh, approached me and uh, he said um, the right time for a star uh, mother is uh, after sunset, not uh, after Salat al Maghrib. And uh, the Azkar of the uh, Sabah mm -hmm. is. Uh, before uh, sunrise, not after Salat al So uh, the question, my question is that uh, which time is the perfect time for the Askar, morning Askar and the uh, evening Askar, and uh, which time is like uh, is uh, solid when you when you are trying to do your Askar uh, morning and the evening? Okay, got your question, brother. And, uh, I mean, and yeah. the second question, I yeah. have a second question. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second question is that uh, in the Quran it says It, it talks about uh, the soul mm. And uh, this ayah It talks about the heart And uh, the, the, the third ayah It talks about the brain mm. So the, my question is that What is the Islamic role of the soul, heart and the brain? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Okay, uh, then the last question is like, um, I am a medical student uh, in our class. It's, it's not that big class, so it's like uh, we are interacting with each other. It's a combination of boys and the girls. So my question is that, is it like uh, allowed to interact with the girls, like those as academic uh, partners, as colleagues? Yeah, like... Um, yeah, please, uh, can you uh, explain this to me? Something like that in the group discussion. All right, got your question. Now? I got your questions, Amin. Okay. Thank, you Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor. Barakallahu feek. Um, we're talking about the ijaba to dua and the difference between qabul and ijaba. And I said, and this is what uh, I'm, I'm just quoting what uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and ibn al-Qayyim said in this regard because this is something that was raised even before whether Allah responds and delivers an ijabah 
to the supplication of non-Muslims or not, and it is very obvious, yes, he does. And the Quran has indications, he does, and from the Sunnah likewise. So in the Quran, for instance, in Surah An-Naml, uh, verse number 62, look what Allah Almighty says, and I love this verse so much. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ This is a rhetoric question. Allah is delivering this question to remind those who invoke him at the time of need, they beg him to uh, give them a relief and to remove their calamities and to save them. Then afterward, they invoke other than him. So he says, Who else besides Allah answers al muttar the one who is in dire need, the one who is devastated, whenever he makes dua, وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ and removes the calamity, removes the evil. أَإِلَهُمْ مَعَ Allah, Is there any God besides Allah afterward? When you invoke, you invoke him only. When you ask for help, you only ask. Allah, you say, you know, you remember when we talked before about an atheist, whenever there is a major air pump, when the person is airborne, and everybody is screaming, saying, oh my God, then he finds his tongue repeating with people, oh my God, I thought you don't believe in God. Then the following ayat, likewise, then and in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah the Almighty says, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ هُمْ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ Whenever people are sailing in a big boat, there is a huge wave, or there is a hurricane or a tornado that is making the boat to turn right and left and is about to drown. They're about to die. And if the, if the boat flips, that means they're dead. So at this time, everybody, believers and non-believers, says, oh my God. Those who do not believe in the oneness of Allah the Almighty, when they say, oh my God, let's say that somebody is uh, you know, wearing whatever, believing in whatever. Does this item or false deity that he believes in deliver an answer to him? Of course not. Because they don't have an access to that. Only Allah the Almighty. So when Allah delivers, and when He calms down the wind and the waves, and He delivers them safely to the uh, beach, najahum ila al-bar, when He safely delivers them to the land, إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ Back to track. So Allah the Almighty uh, it mentioned that, that they are non-believers. And when they are in a disaster, they ask him with sincere devotion because none other than him can deliver. And whenever he saves them, whenever he delivers them to the land, again back to track and they associate partners to Allah in worship. Also in the hadith, the Prophet uh, said that Allah the Almighty accepts the dua of a non-Muslim whenever he is wrong, whenever he is oppressed. Allah the Almighty raises the supplication of the oppressed one, even if he was a non-believer, even if he was an atheist. And he says, And he vows to answer the dua of the oppressed, even if he is a non-believer. So these are indications that Allah the Almighty accepts. Uh, some of the dua, he's asking for food, he's ask, asking for blessings, he's asking for whatever. But uh, this dua from them is not an act of worship. It is not an act of worship. It is not accepted. Allah delivers because they are his servants. And he's a samad, and he's a razaq, he's a provider, he's a sustainer. So they are his creation, and he is their guardian. He provides for them, and he answers their supplications. But... The, the believer's dua is accepted and is answered meanwhile. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kadra from Somalia, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sheikh Muhammad. My question is if I couldn't fast the month of Ramadan for medical, for medical reasons and uh, I still can't make it up, what should I do? I can't make it 
for because um, because of ongoing treatment, what should I do? Is this treatment something ongoing, as you mentioned? Like, you know, uh, I hope it is not a lifetime treatment, but is it something chronic that you have to live with it? Um, it's uh, chemotherapy and then followed by other treatment I see. for a long time. Yeah. I ask Allah the way to give you a quick recovery so that you don't have to go through the chemotherapy or radiation or any therapy. But in this case, sister, and um, you know, if, if this is the recommendation of the doctors, I would say that you can give the fidya for each day you skip its fasting, and may Allah give you shifa. Al fidya is prescribed if the person is having a chronic ailment, while uh, skipping fasting due to sickness and traveling and any of these uh, uh, legitimate reasons must be made up if the person's reasons do not exist anymore. So I ask Allah the Almighty to give you a quick shifa, Sister Khadra from Somalia. And every person who is suffering of ailment, may Allah give them all shifa, Muslims and non-Muslims. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abu Bakr from Nigeria. Ahlan wa sahlan, Abu Bakr. Mean same to you, Akhi. Barakallahu feek. Go ahead. My question is simple. Mm -hmm. I'm suffering from uh, Please, I want the, the Sheikh to elaborate more on oral sex. Mm. Oral sex in Islam. Is it halal, haram, or so on? Just one question. Sheikh elaborate. Just one question. That's my question. Okay. Got your question. Barakallahu uh, uh I only have five minutes. I have a few pending questions, mashaAllah. Uh, so, brother uh, Abdul Qadir from, no, Sister Fatima from Kenya, her second question, she's got difficulty in learning the Quran. Um, I want to share with you something very important. Besides what I normally say, that the Prophet ﷺ said, those who learn the Quran and find difficulty in its reading because it is not the mother, their mother tongue, they get double reward, falahu uh, ajran. I want to share something with you very important, which is Al-Quran, the word of Allah, the Almighty, does not accept any competition in one's heart. When one dedicates some of his time to sit, watch movies, listen to music, and sing with those who sing, and uh, fill up his heart with this filth, the Quran doesn't find room in it. No, it doesn't find room in it. When the person purifies his heart, when the person prays on time, when the person tries his best to offer the nawafil, and the person doesn't allow his ears to listen to what is forbidden, doesn't sit and watch what Allah has forbidden, the Quran occupies his heart, and the heart absorbs the Quran and enjoys with it. And he finds himself very swift in learning the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you get my message? I hope you got this message. And that is my answer to, uh, to this question, which sometimes I ask myself, why is it hard for me to read what I used to read last month or what I normally read? Check out your uh, history on your computer. Uh, what have you been watching on the TV? Uh, maybe uh, you, know, you were involved in vain talk. You were involved in listening to vain talk, not just necessarily saying, you know, it is very important. So in order for the person to enjoy the Qur'an, find it easy to learn the Qur'an, four times in Surah Al-Qamar, I was just reading it today, subhanAllah. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مَدَّكَ So do that, and you will find it very easy for you, inshaAllah, to learn uh, the Qur'an. We ran out of time, unfortunately. So Sister Asya, Abdul Qadir, uh, and Brother Abu Bakr, with this question about the oral sex, inshaAllah, in the next episode. I'll begin by answering and tackling your questions. Until next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I will say this word, and I ask for your forgiveness and your mercy. And Allah, on the Prophet Muhammad and on his Prophet and his Prophet, peace be upon him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is
is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance, and in your deen allow me to advance.